Exactly. Well, uh, next tonight, the story of Coventry's destruction at the hands of German aircraft bombers during the Second World War has been recounted many times. But the long road to the city's rebirth is a tale not often told. But now the Media Archive for Central England has put that right with a new DVD using news footage from our own archives here and material never before seen in public. Andy Bevan has been taking a look. On any Saturday evening, you'll find this street, Spawn Street in Coventry, teeming with locals and visitors enjoying a night out. These medieval buildings were one of many restoration projects by the city's architect and planning officer in the mid-1960s, Terence Gregory. In the DVD, Rebuilding Coventry, he sets out his vision. The city architect um, was firmly convinced that it will be possible uh, within the next few years, we think, uh, to make a, a very positive contribution to old world Coventry. Coventry was known as the Phoenix City, rising from the ashes of the Blitz by Hitler's bombers in November 1940. Its rebirth took around two decades, but the result was a 20th century transformation like no other. A brand new ring road, circling a pedestrian city centre, a state-of-the-art hospital at Wallsgrave, a major railway station, an Olympic-sized swimming baths, and beside the bombed ruins of the medieval cathedral, a shining example of modern architecture, loved by ordinary Coventry folk and admired by VIPs like Prime Minister Harold Macmillan. Everything we've been trying to do here has been to say, OK, love the building, admire it, enjoy it, appreciate it, but ask yourself what it's for. This huge pile of rubble was once a giant of the motor industry. It's all that's left of the Wrighton plant, once home to PSA Peugeot Citroen, and before that Chrysler UK, and before that the Roots Group. It began its life making aircraft engines for the war effort in 1940, but in 2007, after Peugeot Citroen pulled out, it was flattened. Before that, Wrighton had produced best sellers like the Hillman Minx. Car workers in Coventry were so highly valued that they were the first to receive a £5 note in their wage packet. In the 1960s, Coventry was Britain's motor city. Apart from Wrighton, there was Jaguar at Browns Lane and Standard Triumph at Canley. There was also motorcycle production and tractor making at Massey Ferguson. But by the 1970s, there was major unrest across the motor industry layoffs, redundancies and inevitably strikes. Whole families found themselves short of work and short of money. This was one wife's plea to a union boss during a stoppage at Chrysler in 1975. I suggest you go back to your hospital job. Well I suggest you get the man back to work to negotiate because they won't negotiate without. No comment. But it wasn't all doom and gloom. This is the City Council Visitors Book for 1960 and it was hardly ever closed with celebrities and VIPs clamouring to sign it. In the swinging 60s, Coventry wasn't a place to be sent to, it was a place to be seen. Officials at Coventry City Council filmed many of these celebrity visits themselves. A young Morecambe and Wise were here for a show along with comic legend Arthur Askey. Beryl Reid got a Christmas pudding as a gift when she was in town Frankie Howard, meanwhile, had to make his own with the chefs at the city's Learfrick Hotel. And as for the Beatles, yes, they were here too, with hundreds queuing for tickets for their 1963 gig at the Coventry Theatre. But Coventry Council had its own star in Pearl Hyde. She was the city's first female Lord Mayor, taking office in 1957. She was a champion of the underprivileged. She ran the women's voluntary service during the war, and although she was originally from London, she made Coventry her home. After her political career, she worked in public relations for ATV, counting stars like Crossroads Noel Gordon amongst her friends. Pearl died in a car accident in April 1963 while on holiday in Scotland. She was 59 years old. The wonderful thing about Pearl was her, her capacity for enjoyment. Everything she did, her work, her play, her friendships, were illuminated by this tremendous gusto for living. Pearl Hyde passed away the year after Coventry's new cathedral was consecrated, but she, like so many of the citizens she inspired, 
had already played her part in rebuilding Coventry. Andy Bevan, ITV News. Fascinating. So I'll be honest, I didn't know the Pearl Hyde story. What, what an inspiring woman she was. Absolutely. And I've got a real soft spot for Commentary, so I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, I could watch those sorts of things all day anyway. I know, Fantastic. the archives are brilliant. Yeah. And uh, actually on tomorrow night's programme, Andy Bevan will be digging into the archives once more. He'll be taking a look at Birmingham and the fascinating story of how the city's second-class housing was brought up to scratch. But still to come tonight on I.